Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2020 video. Now, you guys absolutely destroyed my light goal on my last video. The support I've been getting is insane, so I really appreciate all of it. You guys are amazing, and the channel is growing so fast. If you guys want to help me out on this video, be sure to leave a like. Let's shoot for like 150 likes. I said 120 last time, and we I think we tripled it. I'm not sure. We might have just doubled it, but the support's been insane. Thank you so much, guys. But today, I have a new topic that I want to talk about. I want to tell you guys what I think are my top five best new VGC Pokemon. Now, these are Pokemon that were introduced in the Galar decks, and while we did have a couple of stinkers competitively, I think we had some pretty good Pokemon that are just... Mm, they are the sauce. These Pokemon are the sauce, 110% sauce. But I want to know what you guys think is the best Pokemon that is new to the decks. So before the video starts, go ahead and comment your answer to the comment question of the day. What do you think is the best new Pokemon in VGC? I'd like to know. I want to know if you guys agree with me as to what I think is the best new Pokemon. With that out of the way, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more Pokemon content, and let's get into the video. The first Pokemon I want to talk about, number five on my list, has to be Hatterene. Now, Hatterene has found a decent amount of usage in this format as pretty much our best Trick Room setter. It gets access to Magic Bounce, which means it's very hard to stop this Pokemon from getting its Trick Room off. On top of that, it gets access to some pretty decent support moves in Helping Hand and Heal Pulse. And if you didn't feel like running Magic Bounce, because you feel like most Pokemon won't even try to taunt you, you could try to run a pretty cheeky set with Healer Hatterene. That makes it so that if your Snorlax or your Rhyperior gets burned next to you, you have a 30% chance of that status just straight up going away. I've gotten a couple of people with this on the ladder. Uh, they've called me a couple of mean names for running Healer Hatterene, because they're like, why, why would you run healer? Why would you risk getting taunted? And I'm like, well, you didn't taunt. So yeah, it's, it's a very cheeky set. But yeah, this Pokemon is pretty amazing. Uh, the only thing that it's lacking in has to be that HP stat. It's pretty small. 57 HP, 95 defense, 136 special attack, 103 special defense, and 29 speed means it's amazing bulky Trick Room Pokemon. If that HP was any higher, I think this Pokemon would be absolutely busted. It does have a pretty usable 90 attack stat, and I guess if you wanted to run a physical sweeper, you could try something along the lines of Swords Dance, Life Orb, Adamant, Hatterene, but Special Hatterene is much better in my opinion. This Pokemon pairs amazing with things like Gigantamax Snorlax or Weakness Policy Rhyperior because they are very good at taking advantage of the trick room that this thing wants to set up. And if you lead with it next to Indeedee, the Psychic Train from Indeedee means that Fake Out isn't even an option. So without the ability to Fake Out Hatterene, without the ability to Taunt Hatterene, and with Indeedee going for Follow Me on that same turn, your trick room is pretty much guaranteed. And that's pretty much why this Pokemon is so good in VGC. It's just such a reliable Pokemon when you pair it up next to Indeedee. Getting that trick room up is so easy. It's just great. If you're running a Trick Room team and you don't have a Hatterene on it, I highly suggest you try it out. Next up at number 4, we have Corviknight. Now, Corviknight is very, very interesting. We all expected this thing to be a physical powerhouse when it first came out, but it turns out this thing is more bulk than anything. With 98 HP, 87 attack, 105 physical defense, 53 special attack, 85 special defense, and 67 speed, it's pretty clearly just a very fat Pokemon that wants to sit on the field for a while. At first, this Pokemon takes full advantage of its ability to boost its stats. You can run a bulk up set, which will boost your attack and defense on the same turn, allowing you to take full advantage of a very powerful attack like Brave Bird, and because you're boosting your physical defense, Body Press, which uses your defense stat to attack, can deal with things like Ferrothorn, which would otherwise wall this Pokemon. I've even seen sets like Iron Defense, Body Press, Brave Bird, Roost running around on the ladder. This thing is absolutely disgusting once it gets set up, and the fact that it has the ability Mirror Armor means it's able to reflect things like Intimidate at the Pokemon that wanted to lower its attack stat in the first place. Along with that, it gets a pretty decent support move pool in Taunt, Tailwind, and Reflect. So overall, this Pokemon finds a great place on teams as their Tailwind setter, or even just a nice bulky Pokemon to round out the rest of the squad. Corviknight has definitely earned its high usage stats. Some people think it's not that great, but I personally think it's obviously one of the best Pokemon in the format. Next up on the list, we have Dracovish. Now, originally, Dracovish was kind of overhyped, but it definitely lives up to the danger that people expect out of it. This thing has the ability Strong Jaw, which boosts biting attacks, it's a water type, which means it gets stab on water attacks, and it gets an exclusive move in Ficious Rend, which is a water type attack that gets boosted by Strong Jaw that doubles in base power if it goes first. That thing 
does so much damage. It's able to Oko Pokemon that resist it in some cases, but because you have to go first to have this move work the way you want it to, you usually have to give this Pokemon a decent amount of support in terms of speed control. Tailwind from Whimsicott is one of the most common ways of doing it, but if you want to just use this Pokemon in a brain dead manner, you could attempt a Choice Scarf set, which will boost your speed by 50%. However, you won't be able to outspeed things like Dragapult, which are just absurdly fast. Along with that, you will be locked into one move, meaning that while yes, you do want to click Vicious Ren 90% of the time, if a Water Absorb Pokemon like Lapras or Jellicent comes out onto the field, you're kind of screwed. You need to switch this thing out if you want to switch up your moves. But the move pool biting wise is actually really, really good. You get access to things like Crunch, which will allow you to hit ghost types, Psychic Fangs, which will allow you to break things like Reflect and Light Screen, which are very prevalent in the format because of a Pokemon I'll be talking about on the list in a few minutes. You get Ice Fang to hit opposing dragon types, and it even gets access to Rock Slide to take full advantage of that new speed and possibly flinch the opponent's Pokemon. Water Dragon's also an amazing typing. It only has two weaknesses in Dragon and fairy. Really the only fairy type Pokemon you see running around are things that you outspeed with the Choice Scarf set, like Togekiss, like Sylveon, like Grimmsnarl. So this Pokemon feels very safe on the field 90% of the time. Really its only downside is the fact that you must have great speed control. But if you know how to pull that off correctly, this Pokemon finds a great place on Sand teams as well as on Togekiss Dragapult teams. So yeah, Dracovish, definitely a threat within the format and definitely a Pokemon that I think will see usage even after VGC 2020 ends. It's probably never going to go away. Now, the top two Pokemon I was actually really conflicted with. I wanted to put one above the other because of pure usage stats. However, I'm gonna have to put Dragapult at the number two slot. While Dragapult is the number one most used new Pokemon and the number one most used Pokemon in the format, period, it has nothing on the next Pokemon. But let's go ahead and talk about Dragapult right now. This thing has amazing stats. 88 HP, 120 attack, 75 defense, 100 special attack, 75 special defense, and 142 speed. We used to think 130 speed on Tapu Koko was really, really insane. This thing just casually outspeeds it. All of its abilities are good too. Clear Body makes it so this thing's stats can't be lowered. Infiltrator makes it so this thing bypasses Reflect, Light Screen, Aurora Veil, and even Substitute. And Curse Body makes it so that if a Pokemon attacks you, there's a 30% chance that move will be disabled on the next turn. Both of its attacking stats are really good too, so it can be a pretty great mixed attacker running a physical set with Draco Meteor in the back, or even just a pure special attacker with a choice spec set. But what I've seen the most success with is something along the lines of a Life Orb Dragon Dance or even a Focus Sash Dragon Dance set. However, this thing isn't just pure offense, it gets great support move pools. It gets access to dual screens and reflect and light screen. It gets disabled to disable opponent's moves, obviously. It gets Will-O-Wisp to cut their attack stats in half, and it even gets Breaking Swipe to lower both Pokemon's attack stats. This thing is absolutely insane. Its move pool is pretty decent too. It gets access to U-turns, so it can switch in and out pretty easily. You can lead with it very safely because of that as well. The only place this thing falls short on is on its physical set. It only gets one physical ghost type move, and that is Phantom Force. If this thing had Shadow Sneak or Shadow Claw, it'd be absolutely busted, but Phantom Force does take two turns to go out. The only upside to that is that it breaks through Protect, so no Pokemon's safe from it, but the downside of that is that they have an entire turn to switch out their Pokemon. From what I can tell though, this isn't too big of a downside. It's still able to run a Dragon Dance set pretty effectively, and when it's Life Orb boosted, nothing really switches in on Phantom Force all that well. It also has an exclusive move in Dragon Darts, which has a very interesting mechanic where it hits both Pokemon once for 50 base damage, or if there's one Pokemon on the field, both times it will hit that Pokemon. But yeah, this Pokemon has has definitely earned its usage stats. However, it's very easy just to slap on a team, which is why it's used on more teams than the next Pokemon. But this next Pokemon just absolutely defines what this season of VGC is, in my opinion. At the number one slot, we have Grimmsnarl. This could be possibly the best support Pokemon we've ever seen. It's the first dark fairy type, which means it's a direct counter to Dragapult. It resists the ghost type attacks, and it's immune to those dragon type attacks, and both of its stabs are able to hit Dragapult for super effective damage. So regardless of if your final move is a fairy type move, or if it's a dark type move, Dragapult does not want to take it. This thing gets access to Fake Out and has amazing support moves. Not only does it have amazing support moves though, but it has Prankster to make sure that those moves always go first. In terms of support, this thing's able to stop other support Pokemon by going for Taunt. This thing is able to spread Paralysis with Thunder Wave, which makes it one of the best speed control Pokemon in the game. And this thing gets access 
to dual screens, meaning that if you're on a light clay set, within the first two turns of the game, you'll be completely set up to start wreaking havoc with your bulkier Pokemon, because you'll have eight full turns of hab damage on both the physical side and the special side. The sheer amount of utility this Pokemon has makes it hard for it not to be used in pretty much every single game you play with it. It's great on lead with fake out and dual screens. It's great in the back to switch in on those dragon type moves that your other Pokemon wouldn't want to take. It's even a pretty threatening offensive Pokemon without any physical attack investment whatsoever because it has the same attack set as Dragapult with 120 base attack. And bulk wise, it isn't that bad either. 95 HP, 65 defense, 75 special defense means that behind the screens that you'll be setting up, it's not going to be taking too much damage anyways. So this Pokemon, absolutely insane. The fact that they added this into the game concerns me. Sableye has lost a lot of relevance within the format because of it. It was the other dark type support Pokemon with Fake Out. The only thing that this thing's missing is like Will-O-Wisp. If this thing got Will-O-Wisp, Sableye would be completely, completely irrelevant. But yeah, this Pokemon is amazing. All these Pokemon are great in the format. I personally think Grimstar is the best one. What do you think is the best Pokemon in the format, guys? I want to know. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you want to support me even more, be sure to check out my Patreon, which is linked in the description and on a card at the end of this video. By supporting me on Patreon, you get access to my exclusive Patreon team building live streams every Saturday. And you get to see your name at the end of my video as a special thank you card. But yeah. With that, I'm going to call guys. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I really appreciate all of you liking and watching the videos enough. I really love the community that we're building here. And I really love that I'm able to teach VGC to so many new people. Uh, with that, I'm going to call guys. Thank you so much. Everyone have a nice night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.